How amazing and delightful to have found my diary of 1968 under the rotting uh, planks of my Ganesh cave bed and to be able to read from them, except for the decayed chapters on each end that, that you know, went back to nature. Yeah, on the ledge overlooking St. Nicholas Bay. Um, we pause, Goddess Earthy and I. This is, she's trying to get into the legs of a human so that she can fuck with me on Earth. So, um, the Cleo, you know, she's, she's like uh, zoning in how sexy Cleo is. So this is when Earthy makes her marvelous move mm. between chapters. Mm -hmm. You just heard about the Sponge Island honeymoon on Sponge Island, huh? Earthman read that pretty good. And now uh, Goddess Earthy uh, takes the, 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 the old uh, sex diary out of my hands, saying, your divine memoir needs my divine feminine to narrate the romance, too. Size my inner woman wisely with her otherworldly empathy skills. Uh, like Earthy can transport points of view and narrators while reading like a printed movie script. Goddess Earthy is eager to play Cleopatra. Time travel back 40 years when hippies roamed and ruled the Aegean. So, uh, she wants original, erotic, extraordinary sex. She wants, she yearns for her earth legs. <sighs> um, so Goddess Earthy shapeshifts and time travels into the sex journal in her mystical way. Unbelievable. So, she is Cleopatra. It's not imagination. This is the real substantial sexual <sighs> constant stenabinality. She yearns to, to revel in virgin synaptic friction and finally fucking me with her earth legs. Well, I, earth man, fade gratefully for a breather from having to maintain a fixed male identity. Okay, listen up, because this now is Goddess Earthy speaking as Cleopatra 40 years ago, but now. A kind of a time sandwich of reality. Cleopatra. You know, as prophesied by those wise spun, uh, sponge matriarchs, the month of May does, in fact, arrive. Sponge heats up, and my earth man becomes restless. He wants to visit some holy man. 
perhaps that monk in the monastery of Panarmitis on the far coast of Sponge. That interior overland trail is dangerous. Hard. I mean, round trip, we're talking like challenging 25 Ks. You do the math, I, you know. Um, nevertheless, Earthman needs time out to be alone after two weeks now of Kama Sutra on sponge bed, sponge island, sponge everything actually around here. Smells kind of fishy too. Um, yeah, two weeks, giving peace a chance on our honeymoon. I understand, cool, yeah, okay. Well, um, now that I'm finding my earth voice uh, as a divine creature from another world, um, well, let me tell you a little bit about the monastery that uh, my boyfriends are headed for. Um, saint Michael Panarmitis is the patron saint of Sponge. Uh, he is the uh, uh, saint that a Greek prays to when his boat flounders in a violent storm. A Fortuna, or maybe a Maltini kind of storms in Greek, when his sponge boat is sinking and he is hurled like a pathetic sardine into the Aegean Sea. That's when he shouts out the drying, dying, drowning, with no sponges for flotation, no more drinking. Uh -uh. Cheating, lying, stealing for me. And yeah, I mean, no more. Screwing the wrong non white woman. Mm -mm. That's for sure. The half drowned sailor gargles up this plea to Panarmitis as he wishes on the sacred icon of Panarmitis. For sailors, wishes for his life. If the sailor lives, get this, he is alive. And he makes a pilgrimage to the monastery of Panarmitis and gives the abbot enough money to build a new guest room. That's the deal. This monastery tradition goes back such a long way that by now, 1968, Panarmitis is overgrown. I mean, like it's got 200 guest rooms. I mean, that's how many fishermen did not die in storms. Besides that, the monastery is built on the foundation of an ancient temple of Poseidon. This mythological hotspot is drenched with an abundance of sea gods, ships, sailors, seaweed, sponges, you know, like I said, there's something fishy about the whole place. 